Good evening. Welcome to Worship, St. John's Lutheran Church. This weekend, we continue a series of three weekends, starting last weekend, right now we're in the middle, and next weekend will be the final, kind of a countdown to the end of the church year. The new church year starts with the first Sunday in Advent, which will be November 29th, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. So this evening, continuing a countdown to the end of the church year. You'll see that reflected as well, certainly in the lessons, again, talking about and referencing the last days and the last times. You know as well that Governor Pritzker instituted some new and more restrictive gathering mitigations for COVID-19 this past week. That doesn't at this point necessarily affect the worship attendance and the practices that we do for worship. We're gonna continue with the COVID protocols that we've been doing, but it does very much affect gatherings such as meetings and things other than worship, which in turn means that we will not be gathering for a meeting of the voters as had been scheduled for this coming Wednesday evening. We don't know when exactly the meeting will be held. Jeff Phillips, the chairman of the congregation, said that the congregational voters will be informed at the time when it will be safe to meet. And again, we don't know exactly what that means, but the voters meeting scheduled for this coming Wednesday night has been postponed. Let me make just one note on the worship service this evening. The Hymn of the day, the sermon hymn, is a hymn that's been in the Christian church for decades and decades. It's called Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Uh, there are some folks who uh, just don't like the sort of military or militaristic sound of this. Others think it may make a slight to those less able to stand, for example. Neither one of those issues is particularly true to the origin of this hymn. As you can read in the bulletin announcements as well, the origin of this hymn had to do with an issue of slavery, and the composer said that he had hoped that his successors would stand up for Jesus in an abolitionist sort of posture. So, all that said, we've been trying to limit some of our standing in the worship services, but I want to make an exception this evening. Uh, you know, to sit down to sing the hymn, Stand Up for Jesus, <laughs> would just be wrong, wouldn't it? Just wouldn't work. So when we get to that point, we'll be standing for the gospel and for the Nicene Creed. And I'll ask you uh, some indulgence this evening. Would you mind standing as well, continuing for the hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus? With those announcements, please remain seated now as we sing together the opening hymn, Light of light, O soul begotten, come now, let us worship our Lord.
we stand now for worship? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, 
you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Zephaniah, the first chapter. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness, so then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us to be for us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one, up, one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing the Alleluia. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward, saying, 
Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Again, please remain standing as we sing the hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus.
Please now be seated. For our text, again, now this is the second last weekend, second last Sunday of the Christian church here. I picked just one sentence out of Paul's letter as he writes to the Christians at a church in Thessalonica. Verse 8. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. When a police officer begins her or his daily routine, begins a daily responsibility of tasks for the police department, she or he is fully accessorized with a whole menu of accessories. I brought a few of those here this evening to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Most police officers have a weapon on the outside, and, and then many will also have another weapon concealed. A little bit smaller, but it's a backup sort of thing. Thanks to the Elgin Police Department, they lent us a couple of items as well that they either use or have used. Here's an honest-to-goodness Elgin Police Department riot helmet, kind of thing that's very, very useful, especially when people are throwing like bricks or frozen water bottles at you. Of course, that's something we'd want to have. And here's another thing on loan from the police department here in Elgin. It's a, what they call a traffic wand. It's, it's kind of Star Wars-ish kind of thing, but it's something they use, and it's not just to direct traffic. It's also a kind of a protective thing for them so that people driving, let's say in the dark, will see where the officer is. And it's really quite remarkable. Red, green, white, all sorts of things. Wouldn't this be something that would be useful for us on Easter Sunday with communion? You know, all these people here, we could just uh, probably use a couple of them. Hey, dude over there, chop, chop, we've got things going on here. Come on, the ham is in the oven. Move it along, pick them up, put them down. Quite useful. But not only for directing traffic, it's a defensive sort of thing. It defends them from somebody not seeing them. And then a final piece of protective equipment, not regulation police department, but this is a sports vest. It's a protective vest. We call it an armored vest. Heavy, very heavy. Not sure what's the top, here's the top. They're about 10 pounds, that's what this one is. Not only are they 10 pounds and a little bit on the heavy side if you wear them for a long period of time, but they're made out of a polymer, something called Kevlar, which means they're also quite hot. Bulletproof vest they're often referenced as or armored vest, something like that. By some estimations, ounce for ounce, they are five times as strong as steel in protecting against a gunfire. Like I say, they're a little bit on the heavy side if you wear them, and they're hot. I haven't worn those for eight, 10, 12 hours that a police officer would on patrol, let's say. But I did put one on, this one in fact, this past Thursday afternoon, wore it for about two hours. At first, it's, it's not too bad. At 10 pounds, you can, you can kind of do okay. But even after a couple of hours, it starts getting to be a little bit tight. And I could see when a police officer was on patrol, let's say outdoors, 90, 92 degrees, they'd be really, really uncomfortable. All accessories available for a police officer and more. You'd have a taser today. You'd have probably some ankle bracelets. You'd have different walkie-talkies and communications devices. You'd have all sorts of things that would, would be with you in the, in the patrol car and perhaps also on your person, 
on your person. Handcuffs, tasers, radios. Each one has a place to protect mostly that police officer. Multiple levels of protection, they're called. And for each one of them to be effective, they must be worn. At least the items that I brought here this evening and some more as well. To be effective, they have to be worn. Let me explain why I say that with two true accounts, two true narratives. Account number one happened in a suburb of a major city in California. The sun was just coming up. The motorcycle officer moves slowly through the quiet Los Angeles suburb on his way to work that morning. As he neared an intersection, the red pickup truck sped past and blew through a stop sign, not even slowing down. The officer turned on his flashing lights and radioed the station that he was in pursuit of the red vehicle. As his unit pulled behind the slowing truck, the officer was thinking to himself, the guy's probably just late for work and he wasn't going to make it a terribly difficult stop for that particular truck driver. Unknown to the police officer, the driver of the truck had just robbed an all-night grocery store. On the seat beside the driver of the pickup truck was a bag with money and also a weapon of his own. It's the gun that he had used to hold up that grocery store. The driver of the truck was thinking, the cops already know. He was scared. He rested his hand on the weapon. The pickup finally slowed down at the side of the road and then stopped. The officer parked his motorcycle behind the truck and approached the driver's side of the pickup. He was relaxed, the police officer was. Good morning, sir. May I see your... And he didn't get a chance to finish the question. The driver stuck his arm out the window with the gun in his hand, and he discharged that gun only two inches away from the chest of that police officer. The bullet hit the officer in the center of his chest, he was knocked to the ground six, seven feet away. For a few moments, everything was quiet after the sound of the gunfire. Then, to the astonishment of the truck driver, the officer began to sit up and then to stand up and then to get on his feet. In shock then, the, the police officer started to brush the dirt off his uniform. After a few moments more, the police officer regained his sentence, senses. He, he drew his own weapon and he fired two shots at the pickup truck. The first shot went through the windshield and did no damage. The second shot went through the driver's side door and smashed into the truck driver's left leg. Don't shoot, screamed the robber, throwing his weapon and the bag of money out the window. The officer's life had been spared because he was wearing a bulletproof vest, only, only three-eighths of an inch thick. Those Kevlar vests are super strong. It's account number one, narrative number one. Narrative number two, account number two. Only a few months later, another police officer in the same suburb of Los Angeles, Englewood, California, went with his partners to search a warrant on a well-known drug dealer in that suburb. As his partner knocked on the door, Officer Ray Hicks yelled out, police, and he himself started to kick down the door. From inside that shabby apartment, four slugs were fired through the door. 
one found its mark. The impact that day was almost exactly in the same position in the body as was the case with that motorcycle officer just a few weeks before, squarely in the center of the chest. But in Officer Hick's case, the bullet entered the chest and ruptured an artery. Blood to the brain stopped instantly, and the police officer lived less than a minute. Officer Ray Hicks was 27 years old. He left behind a wife. He left behind three children. And he left behind a bulletproof vest in the trunk of his squad car, part no more than 30 feet from where he fell. Every police officer in Los Angeles understands that police vests, bulletproof vests work. There's no question about that. But that's not enough. An officer must do more than simply believe that they're effective. That police officer must take her or his belief to the point that there's commitment, a personal commitment. That vest needs to be worn when responding to a call, all calls, including when it's devilishly hot outside, including when maybe the officer thinks this is going to be a routine call, I don't need to vest up, even when that officer is busy or maybe mentally even someplace else thinking of another issue. To be effective, those vests need to be worn. To our second lesson, our text for this, a Sunday toward the end of the church year, St. Paul, writing to the church in Thessalonica, mentions def defensive accessories of the Christian. He mentions here the, the breastplate of faith and love. And the breastplate in the ancient world was also true in Isaiah, as it is true in St. Paul, was really something similar in its intent as the bulletproof vest. It, it protected the torso from an enemy, from a spear, from a sword, from the, the chunk of an arrow. It was protective. Paul mentions as well a helmet of the hope of salvation. Yet another thing to, to be protective of, of assaults. Spiritual for St. Paul, just as physical for modern day policemen. Now this is just a couple of references in Thessalonians. In Ephesians chapter 6, St. Paul mentions the same sort of metaphor. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul mentions the full armor of God, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. And in all of this that Paul writes, there is one guiding principle. Every Christian needs spiritual protection. And like the several layers of protection and the several accessories of protection that a police officer wears today, St. Paul would point out, that a Christian needs several layers of spiritual protection as well because the challenges to the Christian faith and the challenges to the Christian person come in so many ways, times, shapes, and forms. Multiple layers, multiple layers. And they are meant to be worn every day. Continuing the metaphor, Paul would perhaps ask us today, when you got up this morning, did, did you get dressed up? Did you put on your shirt, your, your blouse, your dress, your trousers, your shoes? Yes, you say? Did you, mem did you remember your, your spiritual protection as well? That belt of truth, that shield of faith, that sword of the spirit, your full armor, spiritually, are you fully accessorized today? St. Paul would ask that question because he understands, understood then, and he would understand today. 
that on a daily basis our faith is challenged. If that's not the case for you, let me say very much that that is the case for me. And St. Paul would also remind us that God has a goal in mind when he lists all these different accessories for spiritual protection. His goal, as mentioned in our epistle lesson, is that we would find salvation in Jesus Christ, standing firm, standing up, standing strong in our faith, fully accessorized by the spiritual defensive weapons that God has given us in so many venues and in so many ways. Stand up, stand firm. As I mentioned last week, our lessons, and I mentioned it already this evening, our les lessons lead to the end of the church year. That happens next Sunday, November 22nd. Last Sunday, the message was, wake up. This Sunday, the message is, stand up. And even more particularly, dress up. Because you see, the defensive protection that we have, spiritually speaking, in Paul's letter, is only effective if we wear it. If we're attentive about our faith. Many of the people in Thessalonica would, would know what Paul was talking about. There were people in Thessalonica who, even if they did not personally know Jesus at the time, they knew somebody who did know Jesus on a personal level back in Palestine. And so the, the accounts, the narratives of Jesus were still fresh in people's mind, and even in conversation and in worship. But already at the time of Paul's writing to the church in Thessalonica, people were, trying to, were already trying to slack off a little bit and to be less than vigilant, to become complacent in their faith. It has ever been so. Slackness is the hereditary sin of all Christians, no question about that. And there's probably no one more slack than a slack Lutheran. <laughs> hey, we're saved by grace, right? Of course we are. But that's not where it stops. Now, some of us, self-included, live as though we're under this understanding. Hey, I like to sin a lot. God loves to forgive a lot. Makes a wonderful arrangement. <laughs> and Paul would say, uh, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Stand with, uh, say Paul would say, wake up. Dress up. Stand up because the challenges are going to come to you day after day. Be careful. The enemy is always waiting for a chance. Be careful. Stay close to Christ. Pay attention to his word. Gather around sacrament. Link up with other Christians. Be fully accessorized in the Christian faith. Keep your armor on, St. Paul would encourage us, not just one piece, but several, because the challenges to the Christian faith come in so many different forms and fashions. We ought not ever minimize the challenges to the faith that we live on a daily basis as Christians. Friends, we're fully accessorized, which means we can live the Christian faith with, with a smile on our face, with full confidence, with that promise that in the end, Jesus Christ himself wins. The third stanza of the song we just sang says it better than I can. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, we sang. The third stanza is this, stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Thanks be to God, we're fully accessorized. All dressed up, Christian? 
Thanks be to God. Amen. We stand now as we continue with the prayers of the church. The special individual petitions are listed on your blue bulletin announcement insert this evening. We pray for the people there. There's a, usually every weekend also a email blast that encourages you to include others beyond what we mentioned tonight in your prayers. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have made us your people and preserved us through the ministry of your word and sacraments. Continue to pour out upon us grace upon grace, that we may be kept in faith and guarded in hope. Lord, in your mercy. Prevent all disaster and calamity. Deliver us from war and violence. Keep us, give us the patience to endure through the current pandemic. Help us to know and rejoice in the good fruits of the earth. Bless all noble occupation and help the arts to flourish, that our lives may be enriched by beauty. Help us to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of the earth you supply for our common good. Lord, in your mercy. Receive with our song of praise and sacrifice of thanksgiving the tithes and offerings we bring, that through good use of the skills, talents, and time you have given us, you may be glorified in all that we are and do. Lord, in your mercy. Give to the sick healing, to the suffering relief, to the grieving hope, and to the dying peace. Hear us especially on behalf of those who we know to have immediate need. We pray for your presence and as it is your will for healing for Scott, for Roger, for Nathan, for Richard, for Leah, for Tillman, and for Soren. Come close to Lorraine and Chuck as they approach the day when they will stand in your nearer presence. Comfort with the promise of resurrection, the family and friends of Matt as they move from the valleys of the shadow of death and walk into the days ahead in the sunshine of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain us in the day of trial. Deliver us from all enemies of body and soul and keep us steadfast in the day of trouble. Remembering that here we have no abiding city, but that heaven is our home. Give us your aid that we may be by true faith and godly life prepare for the coming of our Savior, doing the works you have called us to do and accomplishing your purpose in our daily lives. Help us to multiply your mercy by loving our neighbor in need and loving you with all our body, soul, strength, and will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues now as we prepare for the meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and beneficial that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he, gave, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We stand to sing, thank the Lord.